get practice then. So I want to use the remaining time we have to just play with the other simulation. So I, I like using FAT simulation mainly because uh, they, they, there's a lot of support for FAT simulation. Uh, they have organizational um, support behind it. And I don't like using one-off simulations when I can avoid it, but this is an example where I kind of have to because FAT simulation, none of the ones they have there on their website does the thing that I want them to do. So this is an example of a simulation that I thought I could use it to illustrate um, electric field lines. And one thing you will see is it's got limited choices. Um, so with the FAT simulation, I could set up a potentially arbitrary arrangement of charges. Uh, with this simulation, there are some presets, which, you know, of which there are a lot. Um, ah, presets, you know, it's got a lot of presets, like a three dozen or so, but um, it's a preset. I can't uh, grab the charge and move it around. Uh, I'm changing the view right now, you know, see that three-dimensional axis that's moving around. But I, th I think it's still, it'll still be good to illustrate the three-dimensional nature of uh, electric field lines and look at some of the um, interesting things. So now the display of particles, that isn't what I'm interested in. So let me, uh, as mesmerizing as that is, let me move away from that. wonder if, what will we find the force? Oh, I see. I think how fast it moves. Uh, before it was velocity, now it's a force. Um, um, so what's more common, like neither of these are really all the common. The next three are common. So equipotential, something, that's something we can look at uh, next week when we cover equipotentials. Oh, wow, that's a weird choice. Um, <laughs> next week and uh, so electric field vector is what you saw in with the FET simulation uh, I see it, it's doing that view because it does show G slice let's say no slicing so this shows the whole three-dimensional uh, vector field view uh, so let's stick with the three dimensions because if we wanted the two dimensions we can look at the FET simulation so this is a uh, kind of the same version as what the FET simulation is doing and um, what I really want you to show with this is not the field vectors, which again, the FAT simulation does, but field lines, which FAT simulation doesn't. And you can kind of get a sense of how these lines are arranged as you kind of take it and rotate it around. Um, I hope you get a sense that these are, um, these lines are isotropically oriented in the sense that as I grab this view and rotate it around, like there are some views where lines uh, line up in such a way that you see gaps through it or whatnot, but that's just a quirk of how it's drawn, you know. It picked this plane and then a plane a little bit rotated. Um, but like if you take a more statistical view, uh, no matter how it's oriented, the density of lines remain about the same. It's, uh, uh, it's radially symmetric. It's rotationally symmetric. And um, if that's uh, not quite evident as you look at it, then that's where slicing can be useful. Because the slicing shows um, projection of these lines onto one plane. And when you kind of rotate it around and look at the plane head on, then you can see, well, it should have been possible to see more easily that these are um, uniformly spaced, but I think there's a bug in the programming. Like these look denser than these, and that's definitely wrong. <laughs> so let me move away from point charge. It's a little too boring. I'm sure there's, or actually before I do that, let me see X slicing. Yeah, it, it, these angles being different, that's some bug in the programming, I'm sure. Um, so let me look at dipole, where it's more interesting. So, um, so yeah. Now, with the dipole fields, it's more interesting a few ways. So I think the least confusing way to look at dipole charge distribution and electric fields of a dipole charge distribution would be to do it with no slicing, so that you can see the whole three-dimensional view of the dipole field. You can see... Can I show the, I can't tell which is, um, which is positive and which is negative. 
uh, it doesn't quite show the direct. So when we draw electric field lines by hand, we usually indicate the direction of the field line. So let me pretend that this is positive charge and this is negative charge. Then as we draw the field lines, we would add a little bit of arrows so that we can so that we can tell the direction of the field. So if I'm drawing this these field lines by hand, I would have so assuming this is positive, this is negative, I would draw arrows that go in this general direction. And all the lines out of here will be pointing away from the positive charge. All the lines into the negative charge will be pointing into the negative charge. Uh, this simulation, for whatever reason, the author decided not to do that. Um, uh, probably because I think those arrows could really clutter up the diagram. Um, so yeah, this uh, yeah, so with the three dimensional things, you kind of have to have the ability to you know uh, grab and rotate in to get the full three dimensional sense. And um, it, when we talk about dipole fields, this is what you should imagine. And um, I think the way we usually draw it, we draw it with I think uh, this G slice in mind. So this is a more common view of dipole field that you might see. Can I? Oh, wow, I can move the slice around. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I can move this slide, uh, slice around to take like a different, um, like, a, what is it, MRI or a CT scan kind of view, you know, take take a different cross, uh, cross section. Cool. Didn't know I could do that. Um, and you can also, um, when you take a X slice, um, it can look a little bit uh, weird. Uh, like, I guess uh, because they don't have the arrows, it doesn't, oh, sure. Yeah, I think X slice just looks weird. <laughs> uh, Three-dimensional view. So uh, I think I mentioned this uh, in the virtual class session last week, that uh, as we start electricity and magnetism, we really have to keep reminding ourselves that space is three-dimensional. Even when uh, we don't explicitly invoke things that need three dimensions, um, um, all the things we see it kind of only makes sense in three dimensions. Gauss's law only makes sense in three dimensions. So even when we have uh, arrangements that are essentially two dimensions, like infinite plane of charge, the Gaussian surface we pick will be a, like a pillbox surface that is actually three dimensional. Um, so, okay, that's dipole. Let's see if I can... Um, quadrupole, I have no intuition for how <laughs> All right, that's just way too complicated. I, uh, sorry, I have no intuition for quadrupole field lines. I'm going to just move away. We are never going to deal with a quadrupole field. Quadrupole is, you can imagine it as a combination of two dipoles. One dipole oriented one way, near another dipole oriented the other way. And um, I have no intuition for how those should look. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to move away. Charge the line, that can be interesting. So with the charge of the lines, if you look at it from one perspective, where the line is, you know, either directly, uh, well, where you can imagine the line coming towards you or, or sorry, towards you or going away from you, then um, then it, the electric field lines, actually, they kind of look like uh, the field lines of, uh, um, field lines of a point charge instead of the, uh, instead of the charged line. Oh, wait, it resets the view each time. That's annoying. <laughs> now, when so it's when you consider the three-dimensional view that electric fields due to charge the line looks different from electric field due to a point charge. And actually, when we drive the formula for this, uh, the, the map strength of the electric field It'll, it, change, it changes differently. With a point charge, it goes as 1 over r squared. With an uh, infinite line of charge, the field of strength de decreases 1 over r instead of 1 over r squared. Um, but, uh, so if it's possible to take a kind of deceptive view that doesn't full, have you fully appreciate. Like uh, This makes it look like it's a point charge. And this view, well, maybe this view is a little bit harder. Can I get rid of perspective? I don't think I can. Um, well, there's a view where, um, so if you imagine not having this perspective, then charge the line can look quite similar to charge the plate. Oh, wait. Can I get infinite charge? Yeah, infinite plane. Um, infinite plane, where like electric field lines, look. they look like they are going you know, straight away. 
So if you draw this perspective view of uh, electric field due to charge the plane, they can up, made to appear similar to this particular view. Uh, let me, can I rotate this? This particular view of the infinite charge line. But the difference will be here. As you go farther away, electric field decreases as 1 over r. If it's an infinite plane, then um, these fields are actually constant. You can see it in this uh, illustration. It's all same color, green, meaning whether you are close to the plane or far from plane, it's uh, the same magnitude. It's uh, uh, one of the things you can drive using Gauss's law. And I also, I think I did one by integration as well, but Gauss's law is a lot easier. Um, let's see, what other example I want to look at? Conducting plate? Uh, I don't know. The, I mean, it's an interesting thing to look at. I don't know if there's anything I can say. Finite line pair can be interesting. So I think this is one where they are uh, equal charge, like one positive, the other is also positive. And the finite line dipole would be where one is positive, the other is negative. And like from one view, it looks kind of like a dipole field. And from other view, I don't know. Uh, oh wait, it's a finite line. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> are they? Uh, yeah, okay, the, so there's a finite line. Yeah, so when it's a finite line, it's different. Um, so the length of the line charge is about that long and um, yeah, charge line. Oh, I see dipole lines. This is what I was imagining. Yeah, okay, yeah. So this is the uh, one where you have two infinite lines, one positive, one negative. Um, and then, like from a certain view, it kind of looks like the dipole field. Uh, but from a different perspective, it looks really different. Because there's this uh, translational symmetry that dipole doesn't have. Uh, translational symmetry along the line. Um, yeah, is there anything? Oh, conducting sphere and point. So this is a kind of an upper division material, how to handle electric field due to a conducting sphere and a point charge. Uh, we won't handle it. In upper division, uh, they can handle this using something called the method of images. Uh, I think there's a scenario where I kind of mention method of images, which should be a conducting plane plus charge. And the charge of the sphere plus point. Let's see. Um, does it not do conducting plane plus charge? Um... Maybe it doesn't. Conducting plane with the gap? No. Ah, here it is. Conducting plane plus point. So when you do this, let me see if I can zoom out a little. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so there's this. I guess it might be harder to see. Um, let me do it this way. So I'm going to take a screenshot here. And I want to compare this with another um, uh, appearance of, with a different scenario that, um, that at least uh, superficially shouldn't be related. But um, the, the one that at least superficially shouldn't be related is the dipole. So let me go get the dipole. And what I need to do is kind of orient it, zoom in a little bit, and try to orient it uh, similar to how it was. It might be a little difficult to um, compare them. How do I? I can't. I can't rotate it. <laughs> I don't quite understand this uh, grabbing thing. OK, maybe this is close enough. All right. So I'll put it here, take a screenshot here. And let me see if uh, by manipulating zoom, I can get something that um, makes this look um, similar. So zoom in here. Uh, well, go to a view where the other charge doesn't appear. Somewhere around here. Oops. Uh, okay, around here. And here. I don't think it'll quite work. Um, yeah, maybe not. Uh, I can tell you the theory. 
um, theory being. Um, so if you imagine cutting across this point where the electric field line would be perpendicular to the plane that kind of is right in between the two charges, and you replace the plane with this conducting plane, then the, the portion of the electric field that shows on one side of the, that plane, it will look identical between this scenario and this scenario. And the way you would prove that is using method of images. Again, upper division material in this class, we are not supposed to be using method of images. Um, I think that's uh, probably all the things. Uh, so conducting planes with a gap, this is, oh wait, not that kind of plane. If they were oriented the other way, that's an uh, uh, example of a capacitor, but not this. I wonder if there's, um, I don't think a slotted uh, plane is what I'm looking for. I wonder if uh, there's a kind of rule about uh, electric fields near a conductor. Um, that we would cover next week as we cover electric potential. I wonder if they have an example of that. I don't think it does because all the geometries they have are kind of nice geometries like cylinder, uh, like like a sphere. It doesn't have any um, any geometries with a sharp point like a pyramid or something else. Um, and that would really be a limitation of um, simulation like this that's designed to show field lines and to make the programming for that practical, they have to limit uh, the number of examples that they can illustrate. Because um, um, if you have an arbitrary charge distribution to draw field lines for it, uh, have the algorithm make choices on how to draw the lines, that can be quite challenging. So. So yeah, let me just end that here. Uh, uh, I, I do think this is a good um, good simulation to uh, kind of help you visualize electric field lines, especially in three-dimensional setting. Uh, it's, uh, you know, this kind of rotating shapes. <laughs> it's uh, the kind of thing that, you know, uh, it's uh, uh, good to have a visual uh, representations of so that um, you, you can, where maybe your imagination fails, you can use computerized tool to help with your imagination along.